Yo, when you first launch Beat Thing Virtual, this is the screen you're gonna see. You're gonna see three buttons, try, buy, and quit. If you click try, that's the full version for 14 days. So anything you do will save and you can play with it and do all that while you're waiting on your activation. Now to activate, um, you're just gonna go over here and you're gonna click the buy button. Okay, so you just click the buy button, then you wanna fill out your information. Like put your name down, um, you know, your address, all that kind of good stuff, steady state, zip code, um, phone number, but really all, mostly what we need is your name and your email address. Uh, then click next, and you're gonna have two more buttons up there, save license requests and read license requests. Um, save license requests is what you're trying to do, so you wanna click that, all right? And it's gonna ask you where you wanna put it. Put it somewhere where you know where it's at. It's gonna save a file, so it could be your documents. In this case, I'm gonna put it on my um, on my desktop. So just click desktop, and uh, after I click desktop, I hit save. I'm gonna save that file, and uh, you gotta make sure that don't click next. Make sure you click cancel after you do that. Click cancel, and then you're gonna pull up your email. After you pull up your email, you're gonna attach that file to your email and email it to virtual at beatkings.com. That's virtual at beatkings.com, and then they will send the activation back in a day or two. Okay, so now when you're ready to get set up, um, if you're on a PC, then you need to watch this. If you're on a Mac, don't even worry about this. Um, but if you're on a PC, you want to get a better uh, audio driver because the drivers that most computer PCs come with aren't very good. So um, this is a better one. It's called ASIO for All. So just go to ASIOforall.com, um, and that's also in the instructions that was sent to you. And you just click the English version. You're going to want to download that, download that file, and install it. Then restart your computer. Um, and then you'll be ready to go. Uh, so you have ASIO for all set up and installed. Restart your computer. Then launch virtual. Um, if you're activated, then just launch it. If not, just hit try, and that's the full version. And you're going to click the system button. All right. This is how to set up all your audio and your MIDI controllers and anything else that you want to do. Um, everything controls from the system button. So here, um, I'm gonna run through it right quick so you can see er everything that's in here. Um, you got your input that you can select. That's like if you your microphone input or your input on your um, uh, audio interface or um, Soundflower if you're trying to sample YouTube, whatever. Wherever you want your input to come in for your sampler or your line through, this is where you're gonna select it. But this is also how you set your input if you're trying to sample YouTube. But you gotta go get Soundflower. Um, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so now this is my audio output on the second one, and this is like, so you want to set this one to a built-in audio output on a Mac, or your audio interface, or, you know, ASIO for all as well. If, um, you know, if you just downloaded that you know, on a PC, you want to set audio output to ASIO for all, unless you've got an audio interface. Um, and then buffer size, that's just if you've got a real slow computer, you want to raise the buffer um, so it'll it'll perform better. If you got a real fast computer, you can set it down to 64, 32. In this case, I'm just going to leave it at 128. Um, it's not something that you necessarily have to mess with too much uh, once you set it once. Um, and then your MIDI input channel, um, you just click on that, and then that's how you can select Rolling Phantom or your pad controllers or whatever. If you're using like an MPC or a pad controller, transpose MIDI notes is what you want. And you want to set it to 36. And this will give you the drum sounds on those pads. If you're on a keyboard, turn that off. Like say if you got, you know, like a keyboard or a phantom or something like that, turn that off. Only use that if you got a pad controller. Um, and you get your MIDI output. This is if you want to control an external sound module or a keyboard or something like that. You can actually sequence an external sound module or a keyboard or a phantom or something like that with virtual. Um, next, you got pitch bend. Um, this sets your, your range of the pitch bend. So, like, say, um, if I want a traditional whammy, I put it on two. If I want like some crazy, really whacked out pitch effects, I put it on twelve. Um, I can set whether it's either for track or global. Track means it only uh, affects the pitch of the track. Global means that um, it, you know pitches up and down the whole beat. Um, and then I could set my PPQ as parts per quarter note. Most of the time, you're just gonna leave that on 96. Um, and it give you that MPC style feel, um, that old school feel. Um, Alright, so then I got user data path here. This is important. I'm going to show this to you right quick. User data path, that's where you um, going to store all your stuff. So you can change what folder that you store all your samples in and, and everything. So I just, just going to scroll out here. I'm going to create a new folder. Um, I can name it whatever I want. And then I just choose that folder 
from the user data path and that's where all my stuff will be stored you see um, I click the kit button next or whatever and then you know, I go back out and I find that file and um, it, you know it can, I put all my samples in there um, all my drum kits and patterns everything is stored in that folder that I created and I set it in user data path and system see there's all my stuff all my exports go in the sample folder all the samples that you take and that you make go in the sample folder if you ever want to drag them out so that's all the uh, system stuff and activation um, let's get all the boring stuff out of the way that's pretty quick and painless though less than six minutes you know what I mean um, if you ain't never made a beat before it's cool we're gonna show you the way if you uh, already make beats and you're doing your thing then we got some other videos too um, and more advanced stuff but we're gonna walk people all the way up from the basics um, all the way up to you know doing craziness so stay tuned for the next video we're just gonna go over the features and then get y'all up and running on this thing so y'all can start making hits alright that's the plan